Hey, welcome back to TV Aftermath. This is Brogy Narg, and today I'm going to be giving my review on The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Season 2, Part 1. Uh, it was a nine-episode uh, follow-up to Season 1. Now, I, I liked Season 1. I didn't get around to reviewing it. I, I really liked Season 1. Uh, if I was a grade, I probably gave it like a C+. Plus. It was good. This this uh, series is based on the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina comic that was uh, probably about five or six years ago when it was first created. This show is based on the Sabrina Spellman character from the Archie comics and also from the Sabrina the Teenage Witch show from the 90s, which I loved growing up. And it's developed by Roberto Aguilar Sacasa, who also developed uh, Riverdale for the CW. This was going to be on CW, but they put it on Netflix, and it worked out way better for it being on Netflix. So in this uh, part of the early part of the review will be my non-spoiler section. I'm going to go over some of the things in this season that I liked and didn't like. Uh, so And there will be some spoilers from season one, because, you know, I have to give where it build up off of. Quick synopsis, uh, after Sabrina at the end of season one signed the Book of the Beast to join uh, Satan, work uh, to help work for Satan, because Satan is in the show, that's who she uh, works, well, she's a witch and they worship Satan. Now that she she's left, she's her and Harvey's broken up, she's now a full-time student at the Church of Night, and she has to adjust to being in this new world uh, new new friendships like her and the weird sisters uh, new relationships uh, which mainly her would be her and Nick Nicholas Scratch and then she also has to adjust that life but also trying to keep in touch with her mortal friends and as things go on there's this big overarching storyline that revolves around the Dark Lord and what his plans are for Sabrina and her deciding whether she will keep keep rebelling against him or will she uh, join up with them, and that's kind of the main uh, sort of non-spoiler we type of way of describing this season. So we'll talk about my positives from season one. Uh, the dark tone and the creepiness of it, I like that. Definitely works better on Netflix. I don't know how they would be able to pull this off quite like this. They couldn't on Netflix. Uh, no super annoying uh, characters, which if you watch Riverdale, a lot of the characters are annoying and and only a few of them I actually like, but even the ones I do like become annoying. But in this season, in this show so far, there are no real annoying characters that I hate. You know, it's, it's surprising because, you know, he's just got good, better writing on this show. I don't know why, but it, it works out. Uh, there's good acting. I like the story direction. Uh, especially this season, there's like new relationships that develop. I like the world building, that uh, the lore, like when you get into like certain history, like the uh, the different satanic rituals, satanic uh, uh, holidays that they have, and like the world and how it's like a reverse of Christianity in a way. Certain things like that. Uh, it's kind of interesting, and so, like I said, the fun visuals with some of the creatures that they have in this show because it doesn't have a huge budget, but I like how they use the budget to their advantage. Some of my negatives for this season and the show in general is it starts to be, it tends to be a little slow in the beginning. It did this with season one as well, but it usually, uh, it picks up about episode four in this season and it, it it's, it's laying the groundwork, especially for like the, the human characters, but it's kind of boring and I don't care, but it does pick up and that backstory does help enhance uh, the ending. So it works. I just wish they could do it in a more interesting way. Uh, some yeah, like some of the side characters, their storylines drag a bit from the main story, mainly uh, stuff dealing with Susie and Lilith. And one of my least favorite characters in the show is Salem. He does nothing. He doesn't talk. He's just a cat. They try to like, oh, he's a familiar. He's just a cat. He doesn't talk. He's not witty. Even in the first season, he turns into like a, a monster thing and, and helps her out a little bit. A little slight spoiler, but he does he doesn't do any of that this season. So yeah, Salem is a disappointment. So you have your main character, Sabrina Spellman, playing by Kiernan Kiernan Shipka, and she's my new favorite character from this season. Last season, my favorite character was uh, Father Blackwood. I, I liked him a lot. He was uh he was fun, and this season uh. 
by the end of it, I really was behind Sabrina. She was really cool. She's not bad in the first season. I just thought she was all right, but she wasn't necessarily my favorite character. And like second favorite was Ambrose from last season. But this season, it took a while for me to just off the bat. Everyone was kind of okay, but as the show went on, Sabrina really uh, grew into her own and kind of became pretty badass. Um, she uh, her main thing is fighting in a way she's like fighting patriarchy because Father Blackwood is a misogynist sort of jerk. So is is you know she's dealing with him and she's like I said struggling with uh, you know she's got Nick and Harvey. She's also struggling with uh, fitting in at the school a little bit because there's still a little bit of tension, not a lot as it was in season one, but just a little bit of tension. Mainly her and Father Blackwood because he despises her and the way she starts to become a, a force to be reckoned with and a leader amongst the school as well which was cool to see so there's also uh ambrose spellman played by chance perdomo uh yeah he's sabrina's cousin and he now that he's been uh freed from his exile or his uh not his exile his uh his house arrest he's now hanging out at the school he's now like this big man on campus and he starts to get closer with uh father blackwood who uh a pre who enjoys he, he he has a certain special interest within Ambrose and Ambrose has to deal with that and then there's uh we have Prudence Knight who's in this show a lot more than she was in the last season Prudence is a fun character I liked her from last season and I like her even more with the, the development of her you know finding out that she's uh the side baby of Father Blackwood I like that and she's still trying to get his respect she still wants the family name and she uh She's also struggles. She's also not struggles. She's also still having to keep the secret of uh, Zelda hiding her her baby sister from Blackwood as well. So that comes into a, a in a good way as well. Uh, Nicholas Scratch, played by Gavin Leatherwood, which should be his character's name because it's a fucking cool name. With Nicholas, Nicholas is fine. I don't hate Nicholas. It's not as dynamic as say. Uh, Jughead and and Archie in terms of you know back and forth or 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 even Betty and Veronica in the classic comics. Nicholas Scratch is fine. I don't hate him. I don't hate the actor, but he's I don't find him that uh, engaging. Like he's just a handsome guy who does he's good at magic, and but I I kind of like the tension between him and Harvey, but it, they didn't overdo it because there wasn't because you know Harvey's got his own thing going on. Now, Lilith slash Miss Wardwell, played by Michelle Gomez, she was one of my least favorite characters. I know a lot of people in the fandom t like this character. I didn't think she was all that interesting until, like, the last episode when you find out that she's Lilith, who is uh, in the, I don't know, the Bible or somewhere. In mythology, She's uh, she was the first wife of Adam, but she was too rebellious, so she got thrown out of uh, Garden of Eden and replaced with Eve, So and she's now, like, uh, Satan's right hand woman and in this season she's she's struggling with working with because she she realizes that there's this special plan for Sabrina and she finds out that Sabrina is gonna in a way take her spot and so she's kind of struggling with should she keep helping the Dark Lord or should she go on her own to try to get Sabrina out of the way Aunt Hilda played by Lucy Davis and Aunt Zelda played by uh, Miranda Otto there's more focus on Zelda this season, because uh, I like both of them, and, but like Zelda gets a lot more focus. Her relationship with Faustus uh, goes in an interesting direction, and you got uh, Zelda, not Zelda, uh, Hilda, her main thing. Uh, she's, she's just good support, and I like Lucy Davis a lot. And there's a little side thing. It doesn't overshadow everything, but she 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 uh, she ha she's good support. And then of course, Father Faustus Blackwood, played by Richard Coyle, who he's not. I liked him last season because he was like pretty. He was very over the top with his acting. He's not quite as over the top as he was in the first season, but he he's still good. I like him a lot, and uh, he's just you know he's he's very much wants to go back to the traditional old ways. And, you know, the men, the warlocks are uh, controlled and the witches serve the warlocks. And he's a misogynist douchebag. And he's also, like, he's, like, hella evil this season. Like, he goes, like, he was bad, but he, like, when you see some of his plans and what he's willing to do in order to uh, gain power and res the Dark Lord's respect, he does some dark shit. Well, I didn't talk about her friends. I'll say more of the stuff with her friends 
for the spoilers, but her friends, like I said, some of them could be kind of boring. Like I said, some of the backstory with them is kind of boring and annoying. Um, and, but they are useful, and they're likable characters. I don't really love Harvey that much. He's fine. I, I don't love... Like I said, they're nothing, none of them are, like, the greatest characters ever. But, unlike Riverdale, where they have a bunch of side characters, and they don't know what to do with them, and I kind of like them, at least here, the side characters, it's not that many of them, but they actually enhance the story in useful ways. They all have their different ways to help the story. So they don't really get lost in the shuffle because they all come together by the end to help save the day. And I like that. It's good. That's good, you know. Make everyone useful. My favorite episode from season two, part one, is episode six, The Missionaries. Uh, really good episode. That was the one that was like the peak of the season, just like uh, episode seven was for me in season one. And this kind of fits in the same area. You just take one episode off. And they're about that point, that's when the show really hits its peak. And that was my, my favorite episode. Get more into that in spoilers. All in all, I would give this season, like I said, I would give season one a C minus. I mean, a C, maybe like a, like a, not a C minus, like a C. I would give this season a B plus, uh, 8.5 out of 10. Uh, very good. I can't wait to see how, hopefully they can hold it together for the second part of season two because that's where for me that's where Riverdale really fell off is that second half of season two it just got ridiculous and really dumb and then I kind of gave up around season three so hopefully they can right the ship and keep it going because it ends on a, on a good uh, interesting note so uh, that's all I have to say for non-spoilers so stay tuned for spoilers Uh, I'm not going to talk about everything, but I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, new relationships are like Harvey and Rosalind. Harvey played by uh, Ross Lynch and Roz played by Jazz Sinclair. They become a couple, which I didn't really see that coming, and it kind of just pops up. And they're actually a good couple. I like them as a couple. I hope they stay together for a while. I don't know if it's going to work out, but I, I like them as a couple more than uh, Nick and Sabrina. And also like that they work as a couple and they actually won. It wasn't like it, it, she wasn't his rebound and he legitimately cares for her. So and, they're you know, they're friends. So it, it works out. And that was uh, really nice. Uh, Zelda and Faust, Faustus, uh, they get married and it kind of goes left uh, with him using the, was, I think it was like a music box to mind control her, to turn her into like a Stepford wife. Because she wanted, she was not in love with Faust, because, you know, they had a little sad thing where he was cheating on his wife with her, and they was doing the kinky, you know, s &M stuff. And so now she was like, look, if I'm going to be working at the school and we're going to be together, like, let's make this official or I'm not fucking with you. And she was kind of like, I want to, I really just want to be with him for the power, because he is a powful guy, and it would be cool to have the Faustus Spellman family connection or whatever so she was she had her ulterior motives and he definitely had his ulterior motives and it kind of went down an interesting way another couple i didn't see coming was prudence and ambrose which i really like them and uh because you know he's ambrose is he goes both ways and he was dating the guy i think it was named lucas and he's kind of missing for a couple of episodes Ambrose was cheating on Luke with uh, Prudence, especially when they did the whole uh, the Valentine's Day, satanic Valentine's Day thing. And But she starts to turn on him later on once uh, Ambrose is framed for killing the anti-pope, which was uh, a good moment. That was episode five. That was, once again, when it really started ramping up. And But by the end, they kind of seem to be they're going to be together to help save her uh, brother and sister, which comes in a little later. But Nicholas and Sabrina, I think, like I said, they're fine. They're not. N none of the couples for me are as engaging as what Jughead and Betty was in the first season, especially the first season of of Riverdale. That relationship really was good, and it it really kept that show going. None of the relationships in the show I feel are that strong, but at least the characters are good and the story is good, so it it keeps you engaged. Um, and Nicholas is cool. He's not. He's not a complete fuckboy like Archie is, because Archie was terrible. And he's a little bit of a fuckboy because he's you no. Know, he's starting to date Sabrina, but he's still kind of messing around with the twins a little bit. But Sabrina tells him, like, "Hey, knock that off if we're going to be together," and he's willing to do it. And then the whole sort of shock angle 
where you find out that he's actually was a spy working for uh, Lucifer the whole time, although he did fall for her, and he doesn't, you know, he's like, yeah, I was hired to spy on you, but then I did fall for you, so I'm kind of sorry about it. That was, I expected something like that. I'm just glad he wasn't evil, where it was like, I never loved you. It was all a work. I, I, you know, I was like, I... I hated every moment I had to be around. I mean, at least it wasn't that, you know. I'm glad they didn't go that route, but the, the route they went with was fine. Him sacrificing himself was also very noble of him, so he's a good guy. Father Blackwood, he's probably like the second villain, I guess, tech, by the end of it, he's the second main villain. Uh, he, yeah, he's hella evil. Him setting up the, uh, the anti-pope. Now, I was confused, because I thought he was the anti-pope, because... I could have sworn that was, he was like, I'm the human embodiment of Satan on Earth, of Lucifer on Earth, which I'm like, well, that would make him like the Pope, but apparently he's not. He's just another, like, archbishop, basically. And then you got the actual anti-Pope, which was played, I ah, don't remember the actor's name, but he was on Reaper. He played the devil before. He's a great actor, and he plays the anti-Pope, and he, uh... Faustus has his little side group of all boys called the uh, Judas Society, and he he brainwashes them, or my, he uses the familiars to mind control them to kill the Pope, so when he rolls up, he acts as the hero, saving, you know, avenging the Pope, and he's about to kill Ambrose, but the mind control breaks at that moment, and Ambrose, like, gets out of there, so then that makes Ambrose a fugitive, which, once again, is all a setup, and he's also, after this, he marries Zelda, that's when he mind controls her, and he's trying to take the anti-pope spot, but then, that, and that doesn't work out, because, you know, the Dark Lord comes in and stops him. He changes the Church of Night to the Church of Judas, and then he, once he realizes that uh, Satan wants to use Sabrina as his, you know, as his, right, as his bride, he's like, well, you know what, fuck this, and he, uh, pulls a Jim Jones and kills most of the kids at the school by getting them to drink some poison blood punch or whatever, and he tries to run off with the kids, and oh yeah, he runs off with the kids, he leaves Prudence behind, or Prudence, no, he wanted Prudence to come with him, but she's like, I'm not going with you because you're crazy, and then also... She, he tells her that he's going to take, once he finds out about the, the baby girl, he's going to raise the, the boy and the girl to uh, eventually marry each other. So it would be a pure Blackwood uh, bloodline. So he's also into incest. So yeah, Blackwood is fucking crazy. My favorite episode, episode six, The Missionaries. Uh, so yeah, after the whole anti-Pope murder and they're trying to track down Ambrose, they eventually capture him. And they lock him up. There's this group of uh, missionaries, these, like, Mormon-like missionaries pop up, and they're, like, they kill Luke. That's why Luke was gone. Uh, he, or he's, he was gone for a while. They kill Luke, and then they just pop up, and they show up at uh, at the uh, that comic book store where Hilda works at. They show up at uh, Sabrina's house. The witch hunters attack the school. The weird sisters tend to they use their magic to stop them, but then they start reciting uh, some scripture, and then they break the spell and it's like whoa they must be really you know connected with god but then you find out no they're actually angels and they're here to kill to get rid of this coven sabrina is say helped by nicholas and and harvey shows up because Roz told him that something weird was going on and so she goes to save the kids and the witch the 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 angels they put this thorn craw uh crown on her which like stabs into her head and then they like shoot her with arrows and she dies so they're trying to convert the witches, they kill two of them, and then Sabrina just wakes up after getting shot with these arrows, her eyes go white, and she like, like powers up, and she's got like the, the hellfire, she starts flying, and she just, she forces the, uh, the angels to convert to Satan, and then she, uh, she kills those angels, and then she resurrects the friends that died, and everyone is kind of like, what the hell was that? It was pretty awesome. That was the moment I was like, yo, Sabrina is in, is like insanely powerful right now. Like this just came the fuck out of nowhere. And uh, everyone's kind of like, whoa, so, uh, Ambrose is dying. She goes back. Um, actually, no, no. She's actually, she falls back out. She falls back dead. And Harvey saw this, takes her back to Hilda. Hilda's trying to save Ambrose and some of the others. Then they're like, oh, crap, Ambrose is about to die. Sabrina wakes back up. 
resurrects Ambro or heals Ambrose and heals herself and then it's just like yep everything's cool so she's powerful and they're, they're kind of like whoa what the hell was that and then of course they find out that she is destined to be uh as she said she was satan she's uh lucifer's sword so she's destined to be his right hand woman his bride basically so some of my negatives with lilith She's upset that Sabrina was going to take her spot because being the bride of Lucifer was her original plan all the way back when she was, you know, thrown out of the Garden of Eden. Um, so she's, like, playing both sides and doing different things. There's a whole side, line, side story with her dating this dude named Adam who is, like, the real Miss Wardwell's, Wardwell's ex or whatever, which was a waste of time. There's a whole thing where she makes a scarecrow out of her rib and names it Adam to try to kill Sabrina, which I don't know what is with her and Scarecrow's trying to kill Adam. I mean, trying to kill Sabrina. It's lame. They've done this twice. It makes no sense. It's a fucking Scarecrow. Stop. It's not scary. So Susie uh, is, you know, she's different, and now she's the man. She wants to be. She wants. She identifies as a as a as a boy as a man. So she wants to be called Theo. She wants to be on the girls' basketball team, which I mean, on the boys' basketball team, which is weird because there's no girls' basketball team at this school. And I'm like, what the hell year does this show takes place? Because um, there's no girls' basketball team. And then it would have made more sense if she was actually a either good at basketball or be interested in basketball. It was just nope. I just want to be on the boys' team because. I feel like a boy, and I'm like, well, it would have been a little better if she actually had a skill, like she was actually good at basketball, she was actually good at track and field, but she couldn't because be on the boys team because she is a girl, but, you know, whatever, it was a waste of time, but, you know, she buzzes her hair, and it was kind of annoying. Oh, another problem I have is when Satan comes back, um, some people, especially Zelda, they're surprised that uh, Lucifer, Satan, is evil when they realize what his real plan is to take over the world. Big shock. They're like, I can't believe that Lucifer would do something so underhanded and evil. I'm like, really? Are we this dumb? I thought we all knew what the deal was. Apparently not. I was like, that was kind of odd. Lucifer Morningstar appears. He's played by Luke Cook. And he returns after Sabrina uh, finishes doing this, like, a, a dark inverse of Jesus's uh, miracles. Like, some of them, like, uh, what, were, what were the ones? Uh, resurrection, crossing over to purgatory, performing an exorcism. Some of this she did in the first season. Um, curing the blind, which Roz goes blind, and she, like, clears, you know, cures, cures her blindness. Um, and then also the last one was committing suicide, which was the inverse of Christ sacrificing himself. The inverse would be a suicide. And then that fits into uh, Sabrina. She wants, once she realizes she's like this, you know, antichrist like character, she wants to get rid of her powers and just be mortal. And there's a thing called the Mandrake where she creates a clone of herself and it absorbs all her magic abilities. So then she now has to kill the clone, but the clone outsmarted her, so she has to track the clone down. And she's she's immortal at this point. But that was the final thing, and when she does that, Lucifer pops back on Earth and explains that the reason he's at Greendale is because Greendale is a nexus that draws that draws this neg this evil energy, and also that the Hell's gates are in the tunnels, which plays into the minds that Harvey's been working at, that his parents work at, so oh his dad works at. So that I like how they kind of tied that in together. So the other twist is not only will Sabrina is destined to be Lucifer's bride. But Sabrina is the, she truly is the Antichrist because she's Lucifer's daughter as well. You find out, because I remember there was like a, I think it was like a dream she had where there was like the two babies when she was born. It actually wasn't two babies, it was one baby and one baby had the, the goat legs. That's because um, okay, her mom is Mary, her dad is Joseph, and then Satan, you know, impregnated the mom, gave birth to her, and now he's going to marry. It's like, it's like God came back and is going to marry Jesus is weird, but he's the dad marrying his daughter, which Zelda, once again, is surprised. Like, I can't believe that Satan would do something so perverse. I'm like, really? Are you surprised? Re really? So that's like the theme. That's the whole big plan. Once they get together, they're going to rule the world. 
he's he wants to jumpstart the apocalypse without the rapture. So you know, it's, oh no. So uh, Roz, the friends, Roz, Harvey, and Susie, uh, through means, stop the Hell's Gates, and they trick Satan, and uh, was it Nick uses his powers to uh, force. Satan to possess his body because it's something about like the human body is one of the strongest prisons or at least for a spirit so someone has to sacrifice themselves to absorb Satan and Nicholas is the one who does it and forces because they knock him they kind of confuse him for a little bit and then they absorb him into Nicholas Lilith takes over she becomes the queen of hell they and she takes uh, Nicholas's body with her back to uh, to hell and she also grants two wishes for Sabrina, gives her powers, gives her her full powers back, and then also releases Miss Wardwell, the, the, to be the real Miss Wardwell, who is Sabrina's favorite teacher. So after that, at the end, everybody's still friends. They, uh, Sabrina and her friends, they call themselves the, the Fright Club. And Sabrina's new plan is that she wants them to work together to go save her boyfriend, Nicholas. So that'll be where the second part of season two picks up which should be fun because I, I don't know what I mean I don't know if Lilith is gonna allow that is there any other way they can get around Satan you know being freed it's gonna be interesting but uh, like I said I really enjoyed this season it was a little bit better than the last one hopefully they can keep it up uh, definitely a show worth checking out let me know what you thought of the show in the comments if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, check out other videos on this channel, and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching. Peace. Finish this thought. I am a slave to... The Booty.